He's Tony George. I'm Scott Spritzer. We've got Georgia Auburn. We've got the Patriots, Eagles, and a whole lot more. It is DocSports.com's 10 and 10. Hey, everybody, we've got Minnesota ticket on Iowa to kick off this week's 10 and 10. But before we get to that, a real quick note. As everybody knows, over at DocSports.com, you get a $60 free account if you're not yet a member. It's a great way to give it a trial run. You can get his daily packages, my daily packages, anybody else on the roster, $60 free account. It all starts by clicking on the link below the video. Get yourself set up. Big Ten action. Minnesota is still undefeated after the win over Penn State. Row in the boat. Row in the boat. <laughs> row in the boat, baby. Come on. He's, he's going to row the boat. Uh, they're out of Iowa. Iowa City. Hey, you know who was rowing the boat? He was surfing the crowd. You saw P.J. Flight yes. after the game. My gosh. Yeah. I hope he's got it together this week for the Iowa mm. Hawkeyes because going to Iowa City, oh, man, that ain't easy. Iowa's laying three in this one, mm. so... It's kind of like the books know what the perception is going to be, what the power ratings are, and they're not true believers in the Minnesota Golden Gophers. I'm talking about power rating, folks, uh, because the books had to make the, the Hawkeyes a field goal favorite here. But you know what you get, Tony? When you're jumping on Iowa, you're going to get a steady, not quite smash mouth, but nothing flashy offense and a defense that's pretty stout. And that's why they're always 8-4 and four under Kirk Ferentz. They're going to play a steady game of football, especially in front of the home folks. Can Minnesota overcome it? I tell you what, this this is a tough this is a tough call because it's a tough spot for the Gophers after uh -huh. last week's big win over a uh, Penn State. Uh, and you really you really want to cheer for them. Sure. You really want to see PJ Fleck rowing that boat with mm -hmm. everybody there. But at the end of the day, this isn't Purdue and this isn't Rutgers on the road. This is Iowa in Iowa City, Children's Mercy Hospital, the kids yep. looking out over the stadium here. Uh, this is going to be tough to come back uh, after last week's emotional game there. I, I would be surprised if Minnesota could win this game. Yeah. I think the number's about right. I do think, however, with the weather we're having in the Midwest right now, you could have poss a possible under 44 scare. Sure. Last week, I thought that Penn State game would go under. Boy, was I wrong. Yeah, that was one of the, one of the few plays I, I lost last weekend. weekend. Yeah. yeah, but nonetheless, I think uh, this could be a hell of a game to watch, and it's going to be one of those black and blue, Big Ten in November, mm -hmm. twenty degrees, points in a premium game. I believe so the under, Hawkeyes are built for that's, it, that's, man. It's, that's, this is their game. Exactly. Kind of game. You know what? It was funny. I'll tell you real quick. I was doing a show on Monday with uh, Chuck Esposito from Station Casinos, and I said, "What's the line? Give me a line." I go on Minnesota going undefeated. They got this game at Iowa City. They've got a game at Northwestern. I think they've got Wisconsin still uh -huh. on the schedule to end the season. And uh, he w he was saying something about making uh, Minnesota not going undefeated the favorite. And I happen to agree with that, Tony. Well, I don't know if Wisconsin's going to be able to recover from that game in Lincoln this weekend. Oh yeah, they're probably you know racking <laughs> up seventy five points in. against Nebraska. <laughs> Nonetheless, let's switch gears. Uh, Navy Notre Dame line nine and a half. 54. Um, well, the guy running the camera, what yeah. kind of hat's he wearing? There it is. I, I saw him pointing at the hat. Now yeah. he's shaking it behind the yeah. camera. Notice how silent he is. He was talking <laughs> smack before we came on the air here. But uh, nonetheless, uh, Navy uh, comes into this game. I'll tell you what, this is a great uh, underdog team, Navy is. Mm -hmm. Perry is maybe, in my opinion, the best quarterback in this game. Sure. Uh, for Navy, uh, they are what second in the nation in in rushing, um, and here's the killer. They give Notre Dame fifth, Scott. They are thirteen and two against the spread the last fifteen trips to touchdown Jesus. And I tell you what, I think this is too many points. Talk me out of it. Well, the circa opened it up eleven, and you know that betting back towards the circa has been the way to go lately. Yeah, uh, especially if it moves two points or more, it's almost right. there. Some spots it is down to nine. I actually like the under here, and I'm a little bit cautious, but I do kind of think that that's the way to go because Navy's offense is red hot as far as running the football is concerned, and they're limiting the possessions of their opponents. So if they're still able to run efficiently, then all of a sudden Notre Dame doesn't get as many looks uh, with the football, and I think it stays under the total for me. How about Georgia at Auburn? Let's head to the SEC. Is that a marquee? Bulldogs. Oh, yeah, that is. Two-and-a-half to three-point yeah. favorite are the Bulldogs. 
One of those games, I think, and I'll just say it quickly before we move on because it is the marquee matchup, but this is one of those games where I tell people all the time, this is how you judge if you should be betting your own money. You know why? Because if you like Georgia, you should not lay more than two and a half. If you like the other side, Auburn, you better take at least three because they're both out there and you need to shop. Simple as that. That is the marquee matchup in college. Check that out also this week. Oklahoma lay and Baylor, Tony. Baylor was my seven-unit pick last week, and they good. have, at, by the way, that's eight out of ten on the year now. It was Another easy, one too. This week. Oh, it was, it was a no-brainer. <laughs> I wasn't worried except from the moment they kicked off to the minute my wife picked me up off the floor after the game. <laughs> uh, what a, what a uh, uh, absolute uh, domination by TCU, yeah. and yet they lose the ball game in Oklahoma. Hey, don't fall asleep at the wheel of the getaway car when you're burying Iowa State and almost lost yeah. that game. Uh, and now they're going on the road. The number is 10, total 67 and a half. Scott, I'll say this. Smoke and Mirror wins against Iowa State, Texas Tech, and TCU last week. That's not going to happen against an Oklahoma team. They're probably going to be a little pissed off yeah. at the way they played the second half at home against Iowa State where they were dominating them here. Obviously, I think the defense of Baylor here giving up, I wrote this down, 19 points per game this year. They haven't seen an offense like this, and they're going to come sure. in there. And with this total sitting at 67 and a half, as we tape on Tuesday, mm -hmm. you know there's going to be some points put up. I'm not so sure the way Baylor played offensively last week that they're the ones putting up the points here. here here's the thing. You've got Baylor, who's not the better team, obviously. They no. don't have the talent to be undefeated. They really don't. Mm -hmm. But they've got the coach in, in rule who just continues to amaze. I, I had Baylor last week also. I didn't have a seven unit on Saturday, oh. but I did have Baylor as a little bit smaller of a play. And it's funny because I was texting back and forth with a couple of guys who bet also, and they were on TCU. And they said, your Dan Baylor has nine lives, and they've already used seven. I go, that means we've got two more to go. <laughs> and they got the win. But I'll give you the stat of the week here. How about the Oklahoma Sooners, that defense? Oh, by the way, to finish my thought, Rule's better than Lincoln Riley. I'll take Rule over him. The problem with Rule is oh, yeah. he's going to be in the NFL in a couple of years, so Waco's going to have to deal well, with that. You know what? It's something you alluded to last uh, week. You, you offered a question to me. In a big game, can I trust Lincoln Riley? Right. And I said, the jury's still out, and you kind of him on around. Well, now I'll put the same sure. question back to you. This is a big game for Lincoln sure. Riley. What do you think? Well, he's got the much better talent. Right. I mean, Baylor yeah. is 4-4 four four talent. Easier to coach the team yeah. he's got, the rule buzz. The, they're, they're 500 team with that talent, Baylor. But Rule's got them coached up so yeah. well. He's such a great coach. Uh, here's a stat of the week, then I'll move on. But the Sooners have not picked off a pass. Zero interceptions since their September 14th game wow. against UCLA. They have faced 185 passes over the past six games. They've given up 10 touchdowns, zero picks. The secondary is a mess right now for OU. They are not being coached up. So there you go. Now you got to decide if you want to lay or take those 10 points. Let's switch gears to the SEC. This one here is for... My good buddy Steve back in Kansas City, the okay. old Buffalo wingman okay. on the uh, Yahoo SB Nation Saris radio show. His beloved Missouri Tigers <laughs> at home catching six and a half uh, against the Florida Gators here. And uh, here we go with Missouri. They, they play teams they're not supposed to beat well, and teams they're supposed to beat they don't play well. Evidence, Wyoming, sure. Bandy, Blue Kentucky, Wyoming, yeah. you know. So, I mean, absolutely. And Bryant is still 50-50 in playing this he game. got upgraded uh, to probable, probable. Yeah, on Tuesdays. But so. he's got a bad hammy. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the ex Clemson quarterback here. But Florida, I think, may be a little bit too much for them down the road here. Uh, but at the end of the day, you keep talking about uh, the defense of Missouri and look at their stats and they're right up there not only in the SEC, Scott, sure. but in the country and then you turn around and you take a look at Florida's defense and what they're able to do, maybe this total of 51's in play, especially with some awfully chilly weather there I know my daughter called me, it was 7 degrees in Kansas City nice. on Tuesday <laughs> and this cold snap's running through the Midwest Gators aren't going to like the weather I'm curious about the total more than well, anything in this one because yeah, I, I, I can't back Florida on the road here, and I can't take Missouri either. It's a lot of points. Missouri's undefeated at home. I mean, they're 5-0 and straight yeah. up, 4-1 and against the spread. Much different football team at home, as Tony alluded to. They lost to Wyoming at Wyoming. They lose to Vandy the week after Vandy gets shellacked by UNLV oh. <laughs> at Vandy. Uh, listen, here's the thing, man. As far as Kelly Bryant, you know, he has been upgraded to probable. If he's close to 100%, he's obviously a difference maker. 
I don't like being an opponent, having to play at Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri, going back to Dan Devine, going back to Warren Powers, Larry Smith, right down through the right down through the years. Right. It's a tough place to play. Gary I will say this right now: not an easy out for the Gators if Bryant plays. He has a ten to three touchdown to INT ratio at home. Not going to be easy for the Gators to get over that number of seven. Let's go to the NFL. Saints mm-hmm. land five and a half total, fifty and a half at Tampa Bay. Saints spent a ton of injury. Of injury, a ton of inj- of energy. I can do this. Uh, a yeah. ton of energy, uh, basically focusing on everybody picking up the slack when Drew Brees was out. Then he comes back. They have a big game. They take a week off, and boy, were they flat as it gets. Uh, the Falcons winning was one of the biggest wins for the books oh. so far this season. Oh. Who had their second best. Uh, week of the season yeah. and when the books do well we usually do well we had to play on the falcons also mm-hmm. and uh here's the thing to look i was worried about my teaser well, i was worried uh, 19 wasn't going to be enough with atlanta <laughs> well you shouldn't have teased them <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> you knew they were going to win by 17 out right <laughs> yeah. but here's the thing to keep an eye on this week marshawn Lattimore uh, got hurt last week in that game and when Lattimore went out eli apple for the saints had to cover julio jones absolute mismatch the secondary was miscommunicating they were right. off their game if Marshawn Lattimore is either not playing or not 100% healthy it's a different defense the the, the equalizer though is and I have this team was Jameis Winston throwing two more picks again yep. completely outplayed the Cardinals Kyler Murray by the way playing a lot better than I thought he was yeah but Jameis Winston over, is, is play. The, you know the experiment's over let's yep. get Winston out of there the guy cannot oh. not throw the ball to the wrong color jerseys at least a couple of times a game Tony yeah and I tell you what I don't don't expect and I don't think anybody out there would expect that the Saints, especially against the Bucks defense, the way they played last week and have played recently, um, are going to score less than 24 points in this game. And then of course, Breeze and company are going to want a little redemption. And just a heads up on this game here, the best stat out of this game, uh, the Bucks 10 games, last 10 games, 8-2 and two on the over. Mm-hmm. And I think this here sitting at 50 might be a little suspect well, as well. You might get three touchdown passes out of James. Two might go to the other team. Yeah, you probably right. get three touchdown passes right. Between him and Breeze are going to have five touchdown passes. <laughs> there you go. Game. Let's <laughs> switch gears to the Jags and the Colts. And the Colts absolutely laid a stinker last week yeah. against the Dolphins. Did not look good doing it. Uh, Hoyer back up to his old tricks. I believe word is probable right now we're going to get Brissett back in this game. And, and he has been... Uh, better than advertised this year. And I talked about this, especially early in the season. And uh, I think we both got a little money on the uh, Colts over nine wins this year. We talked about it. And that was before we knew Luck was going to retire. But at the end of the day here, um, Jaguars getting back Nick Foles here. Mm -hmm. So you've got a quarterback that hasn't touched the ball since week one of the season, Scott, against a quarterback that hasn't touched the ball in a couple of weeks Mm -hmm. here. And so I don't know with this total of 44, this may be a little bit more of a defensive battle because Jacksonville needs to play their strengths in this one here a little bit. Yeah, it seems a little hefty, that yeah. total being up at 44, right around the mid-40s. Mm. Brian Horner, terrible. And T.Y. Hilton, by the way, has got a bad hamstring. Yeah, he is. He's and not so 100%. he's not 100%. Yeah. So you got some issues there with some scores. Brian Hoyer was just miserable. He's oh. now, You know he's 0-10 as a starter in the NFL his last 10 starts. Uh, three picks against the Miami Dolphins. How about that? Listen, uh, I wanted to mention this real quickly, and I'll make it quick, but Vinatieri, if the Colts are oh. planning on making the playoffs, they got to get rid of Vinatieri. Hall of Fame kicker, one of the best ever, oh. arguably the best ever. Yeah. Uh, but his time has come. He missed, he missed right. another one last week. And here's the thing about this. is Can you imagine this team of the playoffs having to rely uh, on Vinatieri right now? I mean, his, his confidence is shot. He's not what he used to be. Six. One of the greatest of all time, mm-hmm. but it's time to cut ties, I think. Six uh, extra points. Yeah. Six extra points. And if it was anybody whose last name was a Vinatieri, they'd already been cut. Oh, absolutely. That's what they're doing here. They're kind of paying homage, but paying homage in the NFL doesn't awesome. last very long mm-hmm. if it knocks you out of the playoffs. Let's switch gears here. Is there a better team playing right now, Scott, in the AFC than the Baltimore Ravens? Yes or no? <laughs> I'll tell you what. I would say the AFC right now, no, with a capital N-O, because, yeah. uh, listen, not only did they get by the Patriots, and that was pre- a lot of people had the Ravens in that game, but the Bengals were in a terrific spot yeah. to take on the Ravens, and the Bengals were a very sharp play by sharp people last week. I had not teased. And uh, I had Bengals, but here's the thing is they were done basically from the start. There yeah. was one spot, I think it was like 28-10, to 10, where if they score a touchdown and they threw a pick in the red zone. But I, you know what? They score that touchdown, cut it, cut it to 11. They're still not going to cover that spread right. as far as I was concerned. And, 
And listen, I, I got to tell you, Lamar Jackson is making me a believer. We'll see if this carries over to next year. I would have thought by now that NFL defenses would have figured out this offensive attack, but they haven't because he is so dynamic. And I like the fact they only ran him seven times last week. You yeah. don't need to run this guy 17, 18 times when they're blowing teams out. But here come the Texans. They've got the skill on defense, even with J.J. Watt out for the season. Yeah. They've got the skill on defense where they've had some extra time where they might be able to devise a plan to slow them down a little bit. Well, the thing of it is, got to ask you a question. Now, what's Bill, what big game has Bill O'Brien ever won? Well, he doesn't win big games. Uh, well, this is a big game. <laughs> Second of all, I will tell you this. The total on this is 49.5. Ravens around four, four and a half. They're the best team in the AFC. I thought they would have a letdown against Cincinnati. I so thought it was a bad yeah. spot for them. I put Cincinnati in the teaser with Atlanta. I took two double-digit dogs. Cincinnati, I figured, might even Tony, scare them. They did have a letdown. They would have scored 63 if well, they didn't. Oh, they, well, they had RG3 <laughs> in there on, on the mercy rule. I thought I saw Fort Jones quarter. throw the ball around. You know? But you take a look at this game here. Deshaun Watson, I wrote this down, 70%, 18 touchdown passes, only five picks. And I know you're high on Watson. Yeah. I'm high on the way Lamar Jackson is playing, and I don't think the defenses matter in this game. I'm going to give out a free pick on the over sure. 49 and a half in this game. I like this over. I think you're going to see some fireworks in this game, barring we have 50 mile an hour winds and barring we have a snowstorm in Baltimore. But at the end of the day here, Scott, all the stars are on both sides of the ball for these teams are on the offense. Mm -hmm. Let's see if it can happen. I think Hopkins can have a big day, too, oh, they, against that the secondary of Baltimore. Baltimore hasn't seen Hopkins or yeah. anybody of his caliber. And yeah. also, if they give him time, Deshaun Watson will pick you apart. I love Deshaun Watson on and off the field. One of my favorite guys in the NFL. We'll say this real quick. Baltimore, terrible as a favorite and not good at home. They have not been covering point spreads no. at home. And uh, we'll see if that continues to play out. Right now, the Ravens about a 4 Four and a half point favorite. Just remember on that total too. Remember how many points Arizona put up on them. Sure. In there, so I, I think you're going to see some fire. Both teams in the high twenties, maybe one even in the thirties. There ought to be a great game to watch. Yeah, it's thirty-three twenty-eight against KC when Baltimore played them. I believe that was the final score. Yeah. So it's going to be pretty close to that. A, a similar, a similar offense. Uh, Kansas City when they played Kansas City, they gave up five hundred yards. And I don't think Tyreek Hill was playing that game. No. So they have so, not seen a receiver go. of this caliber like they're going to see on Sunday. Marquee matchup. We're going to go with the Patriots and Eagles. So tune in for that one, Scott. We'll end up the. The uh, 25, oh, 10 games in 25 minutes here. <laughs> 10 and 10 cut here. Down. <laughs> With the Bears and the Rams, uh, both of them uh, miserable performances last week, although the Bears managed to win simply because Detroit did not have Matt Stafford, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I heard about that on, I made a little side bet on that Saturday. I heard, I heard a little whisper on Saturday before the line shot way up. But here, uh, the under in this game, Rams minus six and a half. First of all, what the hell are the Rams doing late six and a half to anyone? And what the hell is this total doing over 40? This thing reeks of under here. Two dysfunctional offenses against two better than average defenses, Scott. Well, six and a half. You can actually get seven if you want the Bears at this point. Some yeah. of the shops are up to seven. Here's the thing about the Rams, and I've talked about this on a, done, on a dozen radio shows at least over the last, well, since the start of the season. I wondered after the Super Bowl if the New England Patriots had laid the blueprint for how you defend Goff and the Rams. They did. Yeah. Go back to that game, including the Super Bowl. Their last 10 games, they're 5-5 five and five straight up. Goff is only 60% with his passing. How about this? Over a 10-game period now, Goff has just 11 touchdown passes. He has 10 interceptions to go with it. The offensive line is a mess. They've lost like four out of five starters. Mm -hmm. They're banged up. They can't run the football. Gurley ran the ball 13 well, times last game. They're, 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 they're not even going to it. They're, they keep saying Gurley's not what he used to be. Well, <laughs> guess what? He might not be, but how can you tell when you've got 80% of your offensive line is sidelined by injury? Right. So, listen, it's a situation where teams are forcing Goff to be a drop-back passer, and that's not what he does. He's a play-action passer coming off uh, the running game first, and that he, he's great at that, and that's what he does. So they're not able to run the offense they want to. And how about this? 19 straight offensive possessions for the Rams without a touchdown. 19 straight offensive possessions, no offensive touchdowns. Uh, listen, Khalil Mack, got to get back to sack of the quarterback, dude. It's been a few games since you've had a sack, but I'm, I'm with you here. I, I think a lower scoring game is in the cards in this one. I think under 41 and a half is the way to go here. And be careful around this weekend laying big points and six and a half is big points in the NFL because I'll tell you what right now, you had 10 out of 12 games last week in the NFL, including the thrilling 
game on Monday night. I love it. <laughs> Come down to be in one possession games. That's how tight it is in the NFL. Get over to DocSports.com right there. Get yourself hooked up on Sunday. Scott's hot. I came back last week in the NFL. And be sure to tune in to the marquee matchups. Thanks for tuning in. Come, come see us. DocSports.com.